Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and this press conference. The Academy has concluded its meeting, and we are ready to announce this year's Nobel Prize in Physics. And as usual, we'll do it both in Swedish and in English. I'm Joran Hansen, I'm the Secretary General of the Academy. And to my right is Professor Nils Mortensson, the Acting Chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics. To my left, Professor Tors Hans Hansson, who is not a brother of mine, but a member of the committee and an expert in the field of the prize. Later on, we hope to have one of our new Nobel laureates with us on the phone. This year's Nobel Prize is about exotic matter in the quantum world. Årets Nobelpris handlar om exotisk materia i kvantvärlden. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har beslutat att utdela 2016 års Nobelpris i fysik med ena hälften till David J. Fowles och andra hälften till F. Duncan Haldane och J. Michael Kosterlitz för teoretiska upptäckter av topologiska fasövergångar och topologiska materiefaser. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics with one half to David J. Fowles and the other half to F. Duncan Haldane and J. Michael Kosterlitz for theoretical discoveries of topological phase transitions and topological phases of matter. Für theoretische Entdeckungen, topologischer Phasenübergänge und topologischer Materiefasern. Pour leur découverte théorique de transition de phase topologique et de phase topologique de la matière. Zatiaretitjeski et kritia topologiskich fasovich perechodov i topologiskich fas materi. You have our new Nobel laureates and the pictures on the screen above me. Some <coughs> personal information. David J. Fowles was born in Beerston in the United Kingdom in 1934. He is now Emeritus Professor at the University of Washington in Seattle in the United States. Duncan Haldane was born in London in 1951. He is the Eugene Higgins Professor of Physics at Princeton University, New Jersey, United States. And J. Michael Kostelitz uh, was born in Aberdeen in the United Kingdom in 1942. And he's currently Harrison Farnsworth Professor of Physics at Brown University Rhode Island, USA. So that's the announcement. And now, Professor Nils Mortensson, uh, the acting chairman of the Nobel Committee, will provide some introductory remarks on the Nobel Prize in physics. Nils, please. Yeah, yeah this year's Nobel Prize recognizes important discoveries in the field of condensed matter physics. And today's advanced technology, take for instance our computers, rely on our ability to understand and control the properties of the matters, materials involved. And this year's Nobel laureates have in their theoretical work discovered a set of totally unexpected regularities in the behavior of matter, which can be described in terms of an established mathematical concept, namely that of topology. This has paved the way for designing new materials with novel properties and there is great hope that this will be important for many future technologies. Thank you, Nils. And now, Professor Tushans Hansson will give us some insights into the discoveries that led to the Nobel Prize. Hans, please. So, I'm very happy to be here and to tell you about this very deep and actually very beautiful work that is at the basis for this year's prize. And I will start by explaining to you 
uh, a concept from the citation that might not be familiar to you, and that's the concept of topology. So I brought my lunch, and uh, here you see, it's a cinnamon bun. Uh, here I have another thing, I have a bagel, okay? And here I have a pretzel. The Swedish pretzel with two holes in it. Now, for us, you know, these things are very different. This is sweet, this is perhaps salty, different shapes, etc. But if you are a topologist, if you are a topologist, it's only one thing that is really interesting with these things in which they differ. This thing has no hole. The bagel has one hole. The pretzel has two holes. The number of holes is what the topologist would call a uh, topological <laughs> invariant. And just as you cannot have a half a hole or two and two-thirds holes, you can, for a topological invariant, only have integer numbers, okay? Only integers. And another thing which is very important for the following with topological invariants is that it takes something to change the topological number. I take this thing, you see, I can bend it a little bit, compress it, but in order to make it to change number of holes, I have to do something drastic, I have to break it apart. And this stability of the topological invariance is going to be important. So what does this have to do with physics? Well, if we go back to 1980, it was a beautiful discovery made by Klaus von Klitzing. He gave him a Nobel Prize in 1985, actually, for what's called the quantum hall effect. What he did was that he took electrons, he confined them into thin layer at very low temperature and at extremely high magnetic field. And what he found was very amazing. He found that when he measured the electric conductance in this system. He could see it came in steps. Nothing, or one unit, or two units. And this unit that he measured was to an extreme precision. Sort of unexpected, because in these experiments you cannot control temperature and all other things very carefully. So why could you get something which is so precise? There were ideas about that, but the real breakthrough came with the discovery of one of today's uh, uh, laureates, David Towers, who could see, who could show that these steps here actually can be explained as such a topological invariant. It's not exactly as the number of holes in a bagel or a pretzel, but it's something very, very similar. And this also explains why it is so precise, why it's so robust, why you get integer steps. And later on, 1988, uh, Duncan Holbein, another of today's laureates, showed that you could do the same without having this very strong magnetic field. And for the continuation of this field, that was very, very important. Now, let's move on to the next concept in this citation, namely topological states of matter. Now, what is a state of matter? Well, this is something that you presumably know from school. If it's high temperature, you can have a gas. Lower the temperature, you get a liquid. Lower more, you get a solid. But when you lower temperature even more, close to absolute zero, there are new fascinating phases of matter. And the ones we talked about before, these electrons in a layer, that's such a topological phase of matter that you find at very low temperature. Now, this is not the only one. Uh, Holdane, in 1983, looked at another kind of system, a set of magnetic atoms in a chain, and he could show that even in this case, you had such an exotic topological phase of matter. And now, actually, the race is on, and you look for topological phases of matter in chains, in layers, but also in ordinary three-dimensional materials. So that was two things. It was topology, it was states of matter. Now we come to the third, phase transitions. What's a phase transition? Well, 
how do you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid? You do it. You, that you know. You know. You lower the temperature. Now, what is it that really happens? And this physicists have studied for a long time, and it was a good idea about how this transition occurs. And in particular, people believed that if you had these very thin layers, for instance, a thin liquid layer of helium, you would never have such a phase transition. That had been proven mathematically. But as when people prove that something cannot happen, it might be that they haven't thought of everything. And the thing that they did not think of in this case was this thing. They did not think of, well, not tornadoes, but vortices. A tornado is like a big vortex. And it's topological in the sense you can have one tornado. If you're unlucky, you have two, perhaps. But you cannot have half a tornado. It's topological in the same way as the number of holes. That's a big one. Here is a small one. This is the artist's renders, rendering uh, some layers of liquid helium. And you see, there are small vortices here. Here we have a blow up. You can see the liquid is whirling around here. Now, at very low temperature, these vortices always comes in pairs. Actually, it's one vortex going in this direction and another one going in that direction. It's a pair of vortex and anti-vortex. They keep together. When you raise the temperature a little bit, then what happens is that these were tight pairs. Now they will sail away and they become free. And that is a phase transition, a completely new kind of phase transition driven by topological effects. And this was also something that you could apply in many places. And the basic paper was written by Costelis and Paulus, who found the phase transition and understood the vortex mechanism. And in a later paper by Michael Ta uh, Kosterlitz, he also worked out the detailed mathematical theory. And this is something that applies not only to helium films, but to lots of systems, and it's been very important for the following. Now, that was very shortly what it's about. Now, I will answer the question that you are going to ask. Namely, what's it good for? Because I know you're going to ask that. But before I ask, answer that question, let me tell you something that I feel deeply about, the committee feels deeply about, I think all people in physics feel deeply about. And that is that this prize here is for theoretical discoveries. It has combined beautiful mathematical and profound physics insights and achieved unexpected results that has been confirmed by experiments. That's what the prize is for. It's really beautiful and it's deep. Having said that, this work has inspired lots of activity in labs all over the world, international research. Scientists are hoping for practical applications in new electronics, new materials, even perhaps components in the future quantum computer. It has opened this field. It's very exciting. But the prize today is for this. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. We may now have one of our new Nobel laureates with us on a phone line. Uh, Hello. Hello, Professor Haldane. Are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. For and it was a very nice summary. Yeah. Thank you for being with us again. Uh, this is Joran Hansson, who <laughs> called you about half an hour ago. Yeah. And I'm now sitting in the session hall of the Academy, together with journalists from all over the world. And I'm sure they are eager to ask you some questions. So are you ready to take questions? Yes, yes, sir. Who would like to start? Thomas van Heine. You've got the microphone there. Good morning, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, there is one very, very basic question, but it's uh, easy to put it, uh, the, the first one. Um, what was your reaction when you had the phone call half an hour ago? Well, I was, uh, as everyone else is, I was uh, very, very surprised and, to <laughs> and uh, very gratified. I, I know this work has, the work has certainly led to a lot, been, that was a long time ago, but uh, it's only now that the 
It's only now that the um, a lot of tremendous new discoveries, uh, which are based on this original work, have and have extended it in many ways, uh, are now now happening. And uh, it's certainly a, a subject of of of, of great uh, uh, great. A, lot, a huge amount of work is going on 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 the topological insulators, which which were a totally surprising phenomena, which grew out of the uh, this earlier work that uh, David Fowlis and I and Mike Koslitz had done, and uh, there's great hopes for this work to for this these new materials to have a have a have a big impact in in things like uh, possibility of of, of com topological quantum computation and uh, lots of uh, such things. Thank you. More questions? Hi. Yeah, please, the lady over there. Okay, congratulations. Um, Thank you. A lot of this work was made in the 70s, for instance, and I wonder if you see any applications today on your work around us. Yeah, well, the work, my work was in the, in the late in, in the late 80s, and at the time it seemed uh, very abstract, and I even wrote in my paper that uh, the model I looked at was an interesting toy model, uh, uh, and it was of, a, it was of something which turned out to be quite like graphene is today, and at the time I felt it was of, of, of scientific interest and mathematical interest and, and very fascinating as a consequence of quantum mechanics that we hadn't guessed at. But uh, I didn't think it would ever find a practical uh, realization. But if something is actually possible, it'll eventually, with, with material science, any kind, of, any kind of unexpected possibilities will eventually be, lead to some concrete realizations. And, this, and these uh, materials would have a possibility that, that uh, information either electronic or in other versions, uh, photo light can travel in one way around the, around the edge of the system and uh, you can have, without, without the possibility of being, uh, of the information in the signal being disrupted by, by impurities or bends in the path. And so this, this aspect of things has got, uh, at least has a, a theoretical possibility of of having great practical implica uh, implications in in these uh, in in subjects like uh, the, the dream of building quantum computers. So, what what has led to really is that it's taught us that quantum mechanics can behave far more strangely than we would have guessed, and we really haven't understood all the possibilities yet. And what these discoveries by myself and earlier by David Fowlis and Mike Kostlitz show up of really that we have a lot, a long way to go to, dis to discover what's possible and uh, a lot of these, a lot of these things were things that one wouldn't initially have dreamed were possible and, uh, and so, and it's gone on in, in, in recent years, in the last 10 years, this, the, these ideas have been extended and it turned out that a lot of materials that people had looked at for many years had actually did have these topological properties that had just never been seen because uh, people hadn't looked for them. And when, they, when it was realized this was possible as a theoretical uh, uh, discovery, that you could extend uh, my work to uh, a broader class of, of systems that was uh, by, by Charlie Kane and Jean Malie, uh, then, uh, then once and then they realized this could be extended to, to three-dimensional materials and just regular crystals and things. And now people are, are just looking and you, find, and you can find topological physics in many places now. And it was just something that had been completely overlooked because it occurred on the surface of materials rather than in the, the whole material itself. And, um, and uh, it's really... Uh, it, 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 I've been very, very surprised by all the recent unexpected discoveries and extensions of this, and, and suddenly people are realizing that the, the topological effects in quantum mechanics are just a tremendously rich subject. And fantastic how a, a, yeah. a discovery, a set of discoveries by 
small yeah. group of scientists can now explode yeah. in, in a whole research field. Yeah. Are yeah. there more questions from the journalists here? Maria Gunther? We have one more coming up here. Yeah. Hello, my name is Maria Gunther from Dagens Nyheter. Congratulations to the prize. Uh, Thank you. I would like to know how you got uh, come up with the idea in the first place of this model. Well, it was, uh, it really was trying to kind of crystallize, uh, trying, trying to come up with a, uh, a, a, a clear, in fact, trying to, trying to show some, some, something, some, uh, something else was wrong, just to come up with a clear model to show that you, in principle, you could, uh, you could get these, this, uh, topological effect I was, uh, looking for, but, uh, uh, really, just to the, the the key point was to show that this uh, effect that David Fowler uh, had predicted had found in uh, in in the early 1980s in the context of very strong magnetic field, this uh, quantum Hall effect could actually occur in a more general just just when you had some kind of magnetic uh, materials that had broken that that had broken time reversal invariance, but didn't require huge magnetic fields. And it was really, a, it was really a, 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 just a toy model demonstration of something. And, uh, and, uh, and then, it, then, it, then I realized it was a very neat model. So I, I basically stumbled onto this, uh, really playing with the mathematics of some model. And I think uh, similarly David Fowler's discovery uh, he didn't really realize it was topological until uh, he just found there was uh, some number that was stable. And uh, later on, the mathematicians uh, told us what the, what the topological, what the mathematical theorems and the topological classes that was this. So we, we basically, like, like most discoveries, uh, you stumble onto them and you, you're, you, you just have to realize there's something very interesting there, and one never realizes the full implications of these things until other people have started thinking it through and one realizes the big picture. So most of the uh, big discoveries are really that way. I think you, at least in, in theoretical things, you, don't, you never kind of set out to discover something new. You, you, you stumble on it, and you have the luck to recognize what you found is, is, is something very interesting. And basically... The problem with was that with all these things is that you you really need to you, if you don't really can't uh, if you can't visualize what you're trying to do if you if you don't really um, know what you if you can't you, yeah these things which are so which are so surprising it takes a while to do it but to see it but once you see it. Uh, uh, you realize why didn't anyone else think of that before? And really, one can't. The barrier, the barrier to most of these things is that you, you, you just don't, you don't realize what's out there until, <laughs> until someone stumbles over it. I think that's okay. really. Thank you. Yeah. Are there more yeah. questions here from the journalists? Yes, the lady over there. Uh, congratulations on the prize. This is journalist from People's Daily, uh, from China. Uh, my question is, because I read the newspaper this morning, uh, less and less people, especially young people, are less and less interested in physics. The first question is, what has inspired you to get research on the physics? And my second question is, what recommendation can you give to the nowadays young, young professionals? Thank you. Well, I think uh, I was always... My, my parents influenced me uh, with a great interest in science, and I suppose the details of physics, like many things, is I, was, I had the great fortune to have a very inspiring uh, teacher at Cambridge University, Phil, Anders Phil Anderson, who is also received, later received the Nobel Prize. And uh, I think uh, partly the way he explained his, un his unorthodox uh, ideas and... Uh, and uh, inspired me tremendously. And now, uh, I think actually the, this whole topological quantum physics has actually become an inspiration for a lot of uh, a generation of young of young physicists. In the in recent years, 
in, at least in condensed matter physics, and also it's now reaching a bit into particle physics or high energy for, for people in, uh, in, 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 uh, in high energy physics have got interested. Uh, this whole uh, possibilities of topological physics have actually been in tremendously inspiring to, to many uh, young people working in physics these days. And you mm -hmm. see the, the coffee cup turning into the donut and back again uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a meme in, in all kinds of talks. Yeah. So let's hope that I'm sure that you will be able to convey your enthusiasm to students and young scientists when you uh, yeah. come here in December. Yeah. Uh, yes. So um, that was the last question. Thank you very much, Professor Holdane, for being with Thank us so at this press yeah. conference. And see you in December. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, are there any questions to the panel? Hans has promised to take maybe one or two questions before he has his lunch, and Vince and I are also available. I know that some of you are eager to move on because you they are have individual interviews and broadcasts and so on. If there aren't any further questions, then I think we'll close this part of the press conference and we'll proceed with individual interviews with Nobel Committee members for those of you who have requested such <laughs> interviews. Thank you very much for your interest and welcome back tomorrow for the Chemistry Prize. Thank you.
Professor Tosh Hans Hansson, you're a member of the Nobel Committee for Physics and you just presented the Nobel Prize of this year. It is about exotic matter in the quantum world. So my first question would be, what is this exotic matter? Well, exotic is not a precise scientific term. Exotic is something that expresses our wonder our wonder in front of something that is very unusual, very hard to understand. And I think also that has to be seen historically. What is exo exotic for us now might not be so exotic in 20 or 30 years. I guess, you know, electricity was very exotic when it first came around. It's not so exotic any longer. But today, the, the, the basis of matter, I guess we come to that, that uh, is at the basis of this year's prize is really exotic, yes. And this matter, exotic matter, is also in the quantum world. So where is this quantum world? Well, the quantum world uh, is in a sense all around us. But quantum effects are not always very obvious to see. But when you cool down materials to very low temperature, then in many cases, quantum effects becomes very much more uh, visible, uh, more apparent. And then I have another exotic question, perhaps. <laughs> we have this bagel, and you had also a cinema role. What do they do in this Nobel Prize context? Sure. <laughs> well, they, they are actually there to illustrate something. And to illustrate that is not sufficient to just show the bagel. But I anticipated this question, so I brought also the bun. So you see, when you have both the bun and you have the bagel, then you can see that the difference is that the bagel has a hole and the bun doesn't. And the important with the hole is that also things like taste or shape or deformation can change continuously. But the number of holes, which is something that we call the topological invariant, it can only change like integers. One, two, three, zero. This is zero holes. This has one hole. I challenge you to imagine what is a half a hole. What is a what would be to have half a hole? You cannot have half a hole. You need zero, one, two. And these this fact that you have integers that are of topological nature that's intimately connected to the effects and the description of these phases that is at the basis of the prize. Topology is uh, kind of advanced mathematics and uh, has a key role in this Nobel Prize of the Year. <laughs> uh, what, what, uh, what was the role of topology? Well, uh, the role of topology is, uh, there are many roles of topology actually. One role of topology is that these so-called topological invariants, I took the example, the number of holes, actually directly gets into the mathematical description of these phases. Now, it is, takes advanced mathematics to write a formula that counts the number of holes in a donut or calculates that there is zero hole in a cinnamon bun. That's advanced mathematics, but to understand the concept that this is one hole, that is zero hole, that anyone can understand. And that is actually the important thing for, for the basic results. So what were the discoveries of this year's laureates? It was theoretical discoveries that we should remember. And it also illustrates in a very nice way the interplay between physics and mathematics. Uh, which where theoretical physics is in the uh, actual at the, at, uh, at the crossroad. Because the quantum Hall effect, which was the starting point for David Powell's understanding of it as a topological effect, there was an experiment that was already done and he explained the experiment using these topological invariants. While in another case, the case of Duncan Haldane, who predicted certain properties of, uh, uh, of other topological states, actually chains of magnetic atoms, and also something similar to the quantum Hall effect, but without the magnetic field. That was theoretical 
uh, discoveries that predicted effects that was later seen in experiments. In one case, actually 25 years later, and it took much more advanced experimental techniques to do it. Were there very surprising experiments, or did they expect that it will come? Uh, in many cases, when you have a theoretical possibility, since there is so much variety in experiments you can do, in materials, in experimental setups, in many, many cases, you come up with a case where it's actually realized. You cannot say for sure, but experiment experience shows that that happens very often. So that's, of course, very exciting. You know. So, so what are the possible applications of this exotic topological matter in the future? Uh, I can just tell you what people are dreaming about, but also working very hard in the labs to do. And that is to get new materials which has, you know, interesting prop properties of conducting electricity but also conducting other things like what is called spin and the dream is that this can be used for carry information uh, it's also has quantum mechanical properties something that is called entanglement that makes people hope that perhaps you can use these things to code quantum information in an efficient way. So who knows, you know, there might be a future quantum computer where topological effects are important. We, we don't know, but I, I, I certainly know people are speculating about this. Um, can you tell us a little about the laureates? Uh, the prize is awarded half to David Taulas and half to uh, Duncan Haldane and Michael Kosterwitz. Can you explain this division? Yeah. Uh, there are two parts in the, uh, uh, in the citation, topological phases and topological phase transitions. That is how you go in between them. And David Taulis has given important contributions to both of them. Uh, to topological phase transitions together with David Taulis, and to topological phases, he did this important work, and there, later, Holtain did also very important work. So David Taulis has a share in both these parts of the citation. That's why he gets 50%. Thank you very much for taking your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, no, 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 no